Red Alert Politics Editor Ron Meyer and Independent Women's Voice Campaign Manager Lauren Zelt on what happens right now. Um, Lauren, I'm looking at this and saying, all right, whatever differences we saw emerge on health care uh, could be, you know, pale concern, uh, compared to what we're seeing already on the budget setting the stage for tax cuts front. Right. Well, you know, we've seen uh, all spring as uh, tax reform has been discussed, the divisions within the party. Um, but what's what's important to remember is that when he was elected, President Trump promised tax reform for Americans to help businesses create jobs and to get our economy going again. So we can't lose sight of the goal. Yes, there is some discrepancy in how we're going to get there. Um, you know, all spring we've been talking about the border adjustment tax and whether or not that would be a provision of the plan. Um, that seems to uh, be on its last legs. Uh, you saw Vice President Pence this morning speaking at the National Retail Federation um, talking about tax reform. Border adjustment tax was not a part of his discussion, nor is it a part of the White House plan. So yes, we do have divisions. I think that the important thing to do here is to focus on reforms, on ways that we can eliminate government waste and spending. But we will be able to come together on this. It's critical. The president made a promise on it. And especially after what we've seen with health care in the last 24 hours, it is going to be critically important to get this done for the American people. Well, logic would dictate that to your point, Lauren. But, Ron, I mean, the, the, the lead that's kind of buried here is this notion that even the repeal effort that most thought would be doable, because they all virtually, minus Susan Collins, agreed on that, a couple of years ago when Barack Obama was president. Now three have been peeled off and that's not going to happen. So what do you make of all this? What I make of it is that when Trump said we have to make America great again, I think he also means we need to take back to a time when Republicans and Democrats worked together. In 1986, when Ronald Reagan passed health reform, he got 74 votes in the Senate. We're talking about trying to get 51 votes now, right? So we had bipartisan support for tax reform. We got almost 300 votes uh, in the House in the same year for tax reform. And now we're talking about these, you know, the, this whole resistance movement. And it's not only dividing the Democrats and Republicans. Republicans, it's dividing the Republicans amongst themselves because they can't work with Democrats with this resistance mentality. And but they so, can't work with each other. I mean, Lord, well, one of the things that, that surprises me here is the, the, the fact that conservatives are saying the 200 or so billion that this House Budget Committee has come up with, that's not nearly enough. Uh, and now the, the Tuesday group, largely moderates, are saying, no, 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 you're going way, way, way too far. So just yeah. out the gate. The, the, the conservatives and the moderates aren't on the same page with themselves. Well, it's all a negotiation. I think I that's part of what I you I understand, but, but yeah. they're negotiating but with themselves. It wouldn't be like that. I, so, I mean, it, it took time for the Reagan tax reform to come together, right? It didn't happen overnight. There were disagreements and people were brought together. But they were brought together by a president who took the initiative and led it. You know, President Trump says he supports this and he supports tax reform and he supports Obamacare. He's got to take the initiative. Well, he's got to take the initiative. Right, right, right now, yeah, Ronald yeah. Reagan yeah. did. To his point, Ronald Reagan did take right. that initiative. We know the president yes. has moved that. This is an issue near and dear to him. He's very familiar with tax cuts. He's very familiar with taxing. He knows his business and what they are. All hopes hang on him here, right? That's true. But one thing I want to talk about, too, and go back to your point about Obamacare, I think that Republicans moving forward need to be very, very wary of any promises that they hear coming from the Democratic side about working together on Obamacare. I saw Chuck Schumer speaking on the Senate floor this morning about how it was time for Republicans to come together and work with Democrats. Here's the problem with that. Democrats understand that Obamacare is going to fail. It is in a death spiral, and they know that moving forward, things are only going to get worse. But they're not interested in fixing it. They're interested in moving towards a single-payer system. So while I understand that we want to work together on health care, I think that everyone just needs to take the words of Senator Chuck Schumer and others well, on the Democratic might be right. side. Well, you might enough to know, but Ron, my biggest worry right now with Republicans is Republicans, that yeah. they don't have their act together. That's so, my thing. Yeah, so here's the thing. You have to remember, Mark Bigot, who was a senator from Alaska, a right. Democrat, lost re-election because he supported Obamacare. Now Lisa Murkowski, a Republican, she ran as an independent write-in. She That's right, won a write-in campaign. You have to remember, she's now saying right out the gate that she's not for repealing Obamacare, even though Mark Bigot literally just lost his election in 2016 right. because he voted for Obamacare. I think this is really tough waters for her to be going into because I don't think Alaskans are very happy with the way Obamacare is working and her coming out out the gate and killing repeal, I think is bad news for her and, and her future re-election prospects. We shall see. Obviously, they're weighing all of this stuff. But guys, I want to thank you very, very much. In the meantime